Hey folks, this is Tom Crawford and welcome to Technonine's tutorial on opacity. Now opacity is a, a pretty pretty big topic so I want to get you guys thinking real quick when it comes to how we uh, understand opacity and so I've got a tongue twister for you that I'm going to read it off to you then we're going to give you a second see if you guys can master it. Alright, so hang in here. A paper maker produces paper on a paper machine. When that paper machine produces a piece of paper and the paper is provided to a paper maker, what will that paper maker do with the paper produced by the paper machine? You got it? Now give it a shot. So, how'd you do? Did you get it mastered? It took me multiple times to get that thing down, but that's just the way those things are. But it, it, regardless whether you're able to do it or not, really the important thing is, did you capture the question that was in, the, in, in that tongue twister? Okay, at the end of it, that last sentence, what will a paper maker do when you provide paper to that paper maker? Now, I've, I've been doing this for a, a ton of years now, and everywhere I go, if a paper maker gets a piece of paper, they're going to get it in their hands. They're going to start feeling it, right? Right off the bat. So you're going to start going for some, some tactile responses here. So you're going to do an analysis quickly of how rough the paper is. What is its thickness? How stiff is that paper? But almost every time, a paper maker is going to take that paper and they're going to hold that paper up, right? They're going to let light transmit through that paper. And they're going to be looking at certain things. One thing is they're going to be looking at formation. They're going to be looking at, at how well this paper is formed, if there any, what the flocks and voids look like with that. The other piece of it is, is it tells them, to, to some extent, the opacity of the sheet. Because opacity and transmission are somewhat inversely related to one another. So we can hold this, this sheet up like this, and, and light can transmit through that. And we're able to determine these things because most of the paper that we produce, unless you're into some heavy board grades, are going to allow some light to transmit through that, okay? And so all that relates to the opacity of, of the sheet of paper, all right? If you go out into the general market today and you say, okay, what, what's opacity? What, tell me what opacity is. Most people are going to refer to kind of where the digital arts community has gone with it, the graphic arts industry, uh, when you're using in any type of uh, um, graphic package where you're either editing pictures or you're combining pictures, putting text on something, working with that, they're going to have tools that are going to allow you to change the opacity or the transmission uh, of an item on that. And so what I did is I've got this picture of a paper machine and then I've put some text in front of it and it says opacity. And then right below that, it'll tell us what the opacity of that text is. All right. So here's the first one. Okay, so you can see with that, we've got this paper machine behind it, right, in, in the background of the picture, but in the foreground is this word that says opacity, and below it, it says 100%. Okay, so that's telling us that I had the opacity of those letters, of those fonts there, turned up to 100%. When that's the case, do you see anything behind that? Do you see any part of the paper machine in this image? You don't, do you? Because it is blocking everything that's behind it. All right, now the next one. Okay, this guy, I took that same image, but I changed the opacity of the font down to 70%. Okay, so with that, what it's saying is that I'm blocking 70% of the things behind it, but allowing 30% of that to pass through. All right, so now I'm at a, an opacity of 70%. All right, there's the last one. Okay, now this one is at 35%. So what that's saying is that I'm only blocking 35%. 5%. So most of that image of that paper machine is coming through, and you can certainly see easily that that is the case. And so there we were at 100, we went to 70, and we went to 35, and it gave hopefully a good visual illustration of what we're talking about when we, when we discuss opacity, because in reality, that's the same for what we do in the paper and the flexible package industry. We're looking at how well a single sheet has what's behind it. Okay, it is hiding power that we're looking for when we talk about opacity. So when you think of, uh, well, here's our seminar manual. Okay, so here's our, our yellow seminar manual. Now, the, the opacity of the pages in the seminar manual are around 92% opaque. Okay, so that means 
it's letting a little bit of the previous page or the page after it to transmit through. The goal is when I read a book like this or when I'm looking at a magazine, whatever it might be, I'm reading one page at a time. I don't want to see what's behind it. I don't want to see the next page because that's just going to confuse me a little bit. So the opacity of this has to be such that it's going to be adequate for the application. If I go out and say, you know what, I'll just make everything 100% opaque. You can do that, but you're going to waste a lot of money doing that because to, to accomplish that, it either has to have more fiber, has to have more filler, have to have more dyes, whatever it might be, you're going to add cost to that. So it's important that we learn to manage the opacity to the application that it's going to be used for. Okay, so we have to think of what is opacity? Opacity is basically hiding power. On this wall here, I've tried to give us a visual illustration of what we talk about when we, we do opacity. So I've got a number of different samples here that have a varying level of opacity. And so we're looking for contrast between this side and that side. So do you see a difference between what you see here versus what you see there? My guess is if the camera's working well, you're going to see this as being darker and this is being lighter because this sheet is not 100% opaque, so it's allowing some of the image behind it to be seen. Better yet, let me write up here opacity on this side because sometimes that makes it easier to see and I'll return the favor and write opacity on this side all right so we've got those two words there opacity on both sides now let's put that let's put this sheet up there all right what do you see do you see a difference between the two sides? And do you, do you still see some of the word opacity passing through the sheet? My guess is you do because this sheet is not 100% opaque. All right, now let's look at uh, this guy right here. How about this one? What do you see with that one? Do you see a difference between this and this? Is this darker and that's lighter? My guess is you see that as well. It's getting harder to see this up here because it's getting more opaque, but this sheet's probably around 85% opaque. I'm going to take this guy now. I'm going to put it up there. You see anything? You see much difference between one side to the other? My guess is we're getting to such a point now. You might be able to see a little bit here, but we're getting up into the mid-90s now, the opacity of this. And it's not until what I see here is equal to what I see there that I am at 100% opaque. All right, so I'm going to put this on there. What do you see? You see any difference between side to side? I'm sure you don't at this point. So that sheet, I've actually doubled it up there just to be able to illustrate it, is at 100% opacity. Okay, so again, depending upon the application that we're working in, what the product's going to be used for, the opacity of that is going to be determined by that and again the cost of that sheet can go up or down depending upon the opacity of that so when we think of opacity when we think about things that affect opacity we're going to make a basic definition here that really would apply to any of the topics that we're talking about where we want to really tie it into opacity because really there's quite a bit to do with it here so four things can and will happen to light when it strikes paper when it strikes an object but we're going to really kind of hone it in on, on paper and flexible packaging, okay? So four things that, that can and will affect it. Let's just work over here, let's say. All right, so four things. All right, you can see that, good, good deal. All right, so one thing is specular reflection. Now, specular reflection is, let's take a mirror. A mirror has a high degree of specular reflection. So what that means is, if, let's say light's coming in at 45 degrees, specular reflection is the light that goes off at the opposite 45 degrees. So if I take a flashlight and I mount it here at 45 degrees, boom. If this has a high, if this is a coated sheet or a mirror, let's say, then most of that light's going to go back off at the opposite 45 degrees. Okay, so specular reflection is whatever angle the light comes in, it's the light that goes off the opposite angle of that. All right, so if I draw, I say a cross section of a piece of paper, okay, not artistic here. So this is a cross section of the, of the sheet of paper, so think of it as we're looking at this right here, okay, that Z direction in the paper. 
All right, so it's a basic sheet of paper, right? So you've got cellulosic fibers laying in here. You've got fibers and you've got air in this, all right? So when we talk about specular reflection, let's make that the orange one, okay? So specular reflection is light that comes in like this, strikes this, and goes right back off. That's specular reflection. So it comes in at, at, again, I'm just using 45, just to keep it simple. 45, it goes off at the opposite 45. So that's one thing that can happen is, let's write that up here, specular. Okay, the next thing, or the, another thing that can happen is transmission. Now, we've already talked about transmission to some extent when we, when we held up the paper. What does a paper maker do? paper maker holds up the paper so light will transmit through that and again unless you're making a heavy board most paper is going to allow some light to transmit through that okay the more light it transmits through it the less opaque the sheet's going to be so we can certainly make that connection all right we're going to make transmission green so if this is our light coming through some of that light is just going to go straight through and that's transmission Okay, so we got specular reflection, we've got transmission. Now the next thing that can and will occur is absorption. Okay, absorption is then what's going to give it color, depending on the dyes, the lignant that's in there. All those things are going to affect the color of the sheet. So some of that light's going to come into it. It's going to strike those uh, colorants that are in that. That energy is going to be absorbed, and then what energy isn't absorbed can get get sent back out. Okay. And so we're going to use the red for that. So we've got some light coming in here, and it hits this, and, and some energy comes back out, and that's going to be absorption. And that is what, and that's what we, gives us color to something. All right. Now the last thing that can and will occur is a little bit more complicated, and that's called scatter. Okay, so back in high school, middle school, whatever, whatever it might have been, we, we did this phys physics class where we talked about the speed of light. Okay, so light travels at, at X miles or kilometers per hour in a vacuum or in our environment. Okay, and so as it travels, it's traveling at this speed. When that light strikes an object, and let's say paper in this case, that paper, for what we're talking about here, is made up of cellulosic fibers. All right, so that light strikes that cellulosic fiber. That cellulosic fiber has a different index of refraction or its ability to travel through that changes. It slows down. And when light slows down, it bends, okay? We've all experienced it when we've been in a, a, a pool of, of water that's fairly clear and you look down and your feet are well out in front of you and you know they're not, but because of that, that light now is, is hitting that water and that water Light travels through that water at a different speed. It causes that light to bend. It gives you the impression that your feet are setting out in front of you when they're really not. Well, the same thing is going on in this, this sheet of paper here. So it is that combination of air to fiber interfaces which takes that light energy. Okay, so light's coming in here, and it's, it's going through. It's hitting these fibers, and eventually it bounces back out. And as it bounces back out, it's called scatter. So it's a light that, that doesn't get absorbed, doesn't transmit through, doesn't come off the specular component of the surface, but it comes in and bounces between those air to fiber interfaces, ultimately bending and coming back out. Okay, so that's scatter. So we've got four things we just talked about. The specular, specular reflectance, we talked about transmission, we talked about absorption, and we talked about scatter. Now, of these four guys here, specular will have minimal impact on opacity, but certainly transmission, absorption, and scatter will all have a tremendous impact on how opaque a, a piece of paper might be or a flexible packaging material would be. Now, simple experiment to help illustrate that. Okay, so piece of uh, paper towel we have here. Now, my hand is behind it, and maybe you can see the silhouette of my hand because of the way the lighting is in the room, but this sheet is fairly opaque. And this sheet is basically made up of air and fiber. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the makeup of the sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna pour water on this sheet. What do you think will happen? You know what's gonna happen. 
right? So if I take this and I pour water on this sheet of paper, on this towel, I'm replacing now all of the air pockets. I'm replacing it with water. Just so happens that water and cellulosic fiber have a very similar index of refraction, very similar speed at which light travels through that. And so you don't get the bending that you have here. So basically what I've done is I've gone in here and all these air pockets here, I've filled in with water. And when I did that, I increased the transmission of light through that. Okay, so scattering is, is greatly affected by the moisture content of what's in your, your product, okay? So four things that can happen there. Now, that's kind of a, a background of, of what opacity is and things that affect opacity. In the next few videos, we're gonna talk about the instruments that we use to, to measure opacity, but back in the early 1930s is when we started developing. I shouldn't say we, that would sound like I was there, right? Not that old yet. Um, but we started working on a technique for determining how you would measure this thing called opacity, how well a single sheet of paper has what's behind it. And as they did that, they thought, you know, we need contrast. And so they developed a technique that used a black backing and a white backing. And they compared the measurement of a sample versus the black backing versus the white backing to determine the opacity of that. It becomes a ratio metric measurement in that you're comparing one measurement to the other, dividing one by the other. And when you get to 100%, you're at 100% opaque. So the next video, we'll talk about tappy opacity, and how that was generated and how it got started, the company that did that. And then after we get that, the, th the third video, we'll talk about uh, ISO opacity. And then in the fourth video, we'll talk about how the two relate to one another, how they're similar, how they're different. But then we'll tie it all back to these guys over here and how they, how our manufacturing processes are affected by when we change these things and how the instruments detect that. Thanks guys for watching.